Welcome to the breakdown where we break down all the messed up movies. Here it is, The House That Jack Built, directed by Lars von Trier. Also, the director of Antichrist, a film that is pretty classic in terms of being a well-known disturbing film. I already did it, guys, okay? I already uploaded it soon. Anyway, The House That Jack Built is right up there, showing a serial killer named Jack killing many victims over the course of 12 years. All the while, Jack is conversating with some unseen figure named Verge, who basically makes Jack look like a pretentious sicko. Now, before we get into the video, we do have a word from our wonderful sponsor, The Ridge Wallet. Y'all know, the entity that's been selling some of the best minimalist products on the market. Look, y'all, why is you still using a suitcase like you know what suitcases share in common with those wallets you have in your back pockets they both can get overpacked and they both heavy as hell look if you are sick of that then you need to check out the classic slick ridge wallet you got two metal pieces held together by a strong elastic band and options of material that include titanium aluminum and carbon fiber plus you got plenty of colors to choose from too now, this wallet is perfect for holding cash, cards, IDs, and guess what? It blocks any RFID chip hacking in case your cards have them. The Ridge Wallet is that five-star minimalist wallet that is perfect for holding what you need and tossing the rest. So if your situation is comfortable right now and this time, and if you do decide to order anything from the Ridge Wallet website, you can get free worldwide shipping and free returns plus 10% off your purchase. But to do that, you gotta go to ridge.com slash spooky. Just like you can see right here. At checkout, make sure you use the promo code spooky and then you're all good. Again, thanks for the Ridge Wallet for helping us out today. They are really helpful and we are really grateful, honestly. Right, so back to the house that Jack built. He's invited us in. If you want to see what happens, including all the messed up parts, stay tuned for the breakdown. Cue to Gohan. The movie starts off. <laughs> nah, I'm just playing. I just had to do that for old time's sake. Throughout this entire film, the main character, Jack, is having a conversation with an unseen figure named Verge. You'll get more context later, but they have a very philosophical-like conversation based on Jack's ideals and crimes. More likely than not though, Verge will often sarcastically or bluntly disagree with Jack's delusional thoughts. Let's get into it now. It's the first incident. Jack is riding around when a woman, the deadliest woman in the world mind you, flags him down. She needs a Jack. Jack is very reluctant to help because he wants to just go about his business, but he eventually agrees painfully to drive her to Sonny's, a local blacksmith. She's a very sardonic lady and jokes around saying Jack looks like a serial killer. She even tells him how he should kill her and bury her. Kind of rude to joke around like that, but it's a part of her charm. Despite fixing the Jack, it breaks again when they try to use it and she cries for him to drive her back to Sonny's. She's like, I'm sorry about saying you're a serial killer. You're too much of a wimp to be one. That didn't go too well for Jack, and he kills her with the Jack. It's then that we get into more introspection between Jack and Verge. Jack often compares his murdering to art. Like what serial killer doesn't now? He owns a walk-in freezer where he has some privacy, but puts the woman's body inside. He attempts to hide the lady's car despite it being noticeable from the road, but sees it as a stroke of genius because it's out of police jurisdiction at this point, so no officers will see it anyway. So Jack often compares his murder to art, and Verge isn't listening to his rambles out of anything more than interest. He already has a dead set opinion that Jack is a lunatic to put things short. Here is the second incident. All five happen over the course of 12 years. Jack is watching an old lady walk home. Dressed professional, he attempts to open the door first but sees it's locked. He rings the doorbell and once she opens, Jack awkwardly tells her he is the police. It's like a sitcom how much he fumbles around. She asks to see his badge though, something he terribly explains away. After seeing her past husband's memorial, he digs up a story saying he's really an insurance agent who can increase her pension. He said all that about being a police officer, 
was what they tell him to say when he knocks on doors to test the homeowners. She's still kind of doubtful, but if he can increase her pension, then she'll let him in. Once inside, he rambles on about having to stand outside for so long. She's on edge a bit too, cause she really wants more money. But a part of me thinks she knows she messed up. It messed up she did, and she is unsuccessfully strangled by Jack. He has bad luck in strangling her. She doesn't die right away, so he makes her drink water with donuts in it so she can choke. She doesn't choke though, and so he just strangles her again and stabs her in the chest, ending her painful grasp of air. He takes pictures of her body before backing up the van to put her inside. He then covers up his tracks and makes sure everything is clean. See, Jack has OCD and can't stop the need to go back in to clean up the place spotless. He imagines random bloodstains that aren't actually there. Soon he hears sirens in the distance and gets in the car to race away. Despite this, his compulsion tortures him again even though the police are coming. Soon the police investigate the area after having calls of a burglary and an officer discovers Jack in his van. He hid the body before the officer came. In the midst of a burglary investigation, Jack uses it to paint the story that he is an old friend of Claire, the lady he just killed. According to Jack, he says he's been waiting for two hours for Claire to answer, but no answer came from knocking. Jack is very eccentric, but I think it damn near helps him get away from being suspected. He ties the lady's body to his van while the officer is inside. The officer told him to leave. He drives the van away, dragging the woman all the way back to his walk-in fridge building. It literally leads a blood trail all the way to his building. Nature is on his side though because it so happens to rain and wash all the blood trail away. The lady's body is basically destroyed too. Jack knows he's a psychopath and usually practices emotions in the mirror to fit in with others. Anyway, Jack kills some girlfriend of his one day. She didn't know Jack was going to strangle her, and it's the result of practicing so much that he could strangle her to death so easily compared to the last time. Sometime later, he decides to take better pictures of the dead body. His compulsion to be clean and hidden starts to dissolve. He begins making more rash decisions, like running over a random old lady. He brings both bodies back into his apartment, even when someone could notice him easily. Some pictures he takes, he sends to the local newspapers. It's where he coins his own serial killer name, Mr. Sophistication. Sometime later, they talk about family and Jack lights up because family has to do with the third incident. This is kind of disturbing, so beware. One day, Jack has taken a current girlfriend and her two kids, George and Grumpy, on a hunting lesson. Jack makes sure to paint a narrative that he doesn't like killing animals. He speaks so passionately about the activity of hunting. When it's showing random clips that relate, it means he is rambling and showing off his knowledge of everything. Anyway, Jack helps George here shoot a target, but things turn quickly. Firstly, Jack explains the right way to kill a deer. Aim for the young, since a mother could live without her young. The young couldn't live without a mother. So, now that we know this, expect Jack to be killing young. Randomly, we see the family hiding. Jack is probably scared them into hiding, but he is posted and ready to use his rifle. Grumpy is so scared, he runs away from his mother. You probably don't want to see this. I'm serious, close your eyes if you don't want to see children die. Grumpy had his whole leg shot off. The mother's reaction is pretty hard to listen to. Once George pops out, Jack shoots him in the head too, and the mother is left exposed and broken. Jack soon places both children on a picnic mat and forces her to feed her two dead children some pie. This is an excellent day, he says. He asks what her favorite number is, 12. And that's how long she has to run away before being shot. She doesn't really run away though. I understand completely, honestly. I wouldn't blame her if she just stayed on that mat. Still, she is shot and wounded. She crawls away a little bit, but Jack shoots her again and seizes her sporadic breathing. He builds this little trophy parade. It's not the worst part. Get ready for child mutilation. Jack uses wires and tools to change Grumpy's face. And once rigor mortis sets in, then he removes the wires and tools, revealing Grumpy's twisted face. Imagine if Joker did this in the latest film about him. 
is something he would do and everybody would go nuts. The fourth incident. Jack uses a crutch on his way to a girlfriend's home. His girlfriend Jacqueline is insecure about her relationship with Jack. He usually calls her simple because he believes she's stupid, but he admits to caring for her more than a psychopath should. She asks what he does for a living, and he puts it in simple, easy to understand terms. He kills. He killed 60 people. Patrick Bateman admitted that too. If someone admits that they are a serial killer, step away. Smartly, she nonchalantly escapes the room, telling a police officer stationed outside that her brother, brother, that her boyfriend is claiming to be a serial killer and is weird. He played the drunk idiot, and the police leaves, thinking it was a drunk argument. She's still a little suspicious, I guess, and notices soon that she is locked inside her room. Not a big mystery on who locked it. She notices that he's not using his crutch anymore. She don't seem so simple to me, I didn't even notice that. She even says that he must be Mr. Sophistication. The daring Jack tells her to scream for her life. He even gives her some pointers, she's not doing it right. Jack lets her scream out the window, but Jack's point is he doesn't care about her and neither does anybody else. He ties her up and makes her choose which knife he will use. He cuts right into her breast and slashes both off, which we don't see all the way, gladly. After she is dead, he puts one of them on the police officer's windshield. Jack and Verge soon talk about how Jack sees himself above his victims, above women specifically. He describes women as easier to use for art, but not because they might be smaller or whatever. Again, Verge questions all of Jack's egotistic and pretentious speech. No matter what Jack says to justify his murders as art, Verge will often disagree entirely. Jack also says something along the lines that religion has turned humans into slaves who deny the savageness they have inside. Serial killers always have an excuse to say about humanity, right? By the way, Jack made the other breast into a wallet. The fifth incident. Jack has kidnapped a man to add to his row of five people tied together. He's planning to shoot them all in the head with one bullet. A full metal jacket bullet can do that. But his latest victim sees that Jack has the wrong bullet. Jack is itching to make this murder perfect. I'm sure he knows it might be his last and he doesn't care about getting caught or dying. He locks his fridge room and goes to his local gun place only to create a tantrum on the worker there. He can't exchange bullets because Jack has no receipt or ID on him. After he leaves angrily, the worker calls the police. Jack goes to an old friend of his named SP to get a full metal jacket. SP here instead holds Jack so the police can arrest him. Apparently the police are on Jack's trail about a robbery he committed. Jack uses their friendship as leverage to manipulate him to putting the gun down and then kills SP with a knife to the throat. He finds a single full metal jacket bullet and waits for the impending officer. He switched clothes with SP, using the trick to shoot the police officer to death and steal his car. He drives all the way back to his walk-in fridge building with the siren blaring. He wants the police to find him. Anyway, he is ready to kill all five people with one bullet. While aiming down the sights, he notices it's too blurry, which means he is too close. The only way to get distance is to open this door behind him, a door he hasn't been able to open for 12 years. He succeeds into opening the door today though, and once he opens the door, we are only seeing what is in Jack's mind. We are a guest in his head. He aims down at his victims and is ready to shoot until he hears a voice calling him in the back. It's Verge, our first time seeing him and Jack's first time too. I guess all those conversations were after this event. The police are right outside the building. Verge asks Jack, wasn't you going to build a house? All those attempts at building one on his land was a failure in his eyes. Verge influences him to use the materials he has inside the walk-in fridge the dead bodies. It would definitely take hours to do this, time Jack shouldn't have because the police were literally outside before he started. The house isn't real, but regardless, this is the house that Jack built. Verge leads Jack to follow him down a hole inside the house. 
while the police are cutting through the building to get in. The police cut through, and once they have a hole in, a cop randomly aims his gun inside the fridge and shoots twice, both hitting Jack's house. But the second bullet hits right when Jack stumbles inside the hole. We are seeing Jack's delusions right now, so it's likely the police busted in and shot and killed Jack. That's why he fell in so suddenly like he was shot. Where is this place though? You see, Verge is actually a special guide. Around 600 years ago, Verge guided Dante through the levels of hell. I haven't read that story in a while, but this scene is based on Dante's Inferno. Verge is short for Virgil. The Roman poet who led Dante is now leading Jack. They hear a strong ringing sound. The louder it gets means the closest they are to where Satan is, I believe. He is down at the lowest level. They make their way through the circles of hell and Verge takes him past where he should actually be just to give him a tour. They stand right over a broken bridge and below is the final circle of hell where the most suffering happens. Verge says he was actually supposed to deliver Jack a couple circles up, which I take would be the violence circle since that's where most murderers go, right? Jack asks what that path on the other side of the bridge goes to. Verge says it leads out of hell and up into heaven. Jack ponders that maybe you can Nathan Drake across the walls to get on the other side. Verge says you can climb over there if you want, but nobody's ever made it across. And plus Jack, you aren't even supposed to be down at this level. Verge says goodbye to Jack as he selfishly climbs across. He climbs pretty well until he gets to the midpoint. After some obvious troubles, the movie ends as Jack falls all the way down to the low, fiery pit of hell where Satan rests, doomed to suffer forever. So now that we've seen what happens in the house that Jack built, let's talk about the most disturbing moment and most enjoyable moment and that spooky stuff. Cue to go on. Okay, let's get right into it. The most disturbed moment is probably the third incident. Seeing children murdered is always tough to witness, and the response of a mother towards the loss of her children is always harrowing to view and listen to, kinda like in Bedeviled. The most enjoyed moment is the epilogue, as Virgil leads Jack through hell. I liked how this entire scene was, and overall, it was satisfying seeing Jack fall down. That's it. The house that Jack built. Thanks for staying tuned for the disturbing breakdown series. We still got a lot of films to cover, so I can't stop now. Thanks for watching. Spooky out!